So here we are in the first Sunday of September, and I promise I didn't pay Alice to share that prayer request, but it was a really good segue into what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'll, I'll slip you some money later on. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's the beginning of September, and the beginning of September, at least for me, always feels like a time of transition. We're heading into a new season. The weather starts changing. We go from really, really hot summers to cold and cloudy, and we'll stay this way until five years Come from on. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's the start of fall. College football started, and NFL season is just behind starting next week. Go Packers. And, <laughs> um, and, and <laughs> oh no, oh boy. Well, that's it. Have a good day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Go see how it's going. But it's, it's a brand new season, and back to school time is happening. You see the start of pencils and notebooks being sold in the stores and all of these things, and it's a brand new season. And I know that lots of us here aren't in the middle of back to school season. Some of us are with kids or grandkids going back to school. Um, and some of us are years away from that, or if you're like me, then you're years heading into that again. Um, but we kind of take on this back to school sort of rhythm, right? Summer takes a different sort of life of its own. And when we hit fall, then our lives change a little bit and our schedules change. And it can be stressful. Um, or if you're like me, I, I really like organizing things, and I like lists and calendars, and I kind of get a little kick out of taking some time to restructure my calendar and look at what's coming up and see what's going on. But there's this new season to take stock of what's happening and what, what's coming up for us. Like John said, in a couple of weeks, we'll have a summer kickoff Sunday here at Harvard Church, and we'll talk about some of those things that are coming up, different Bible studies or small groups or outreach opportunities, and all of those things are happening. So often, at this time of year, we think a lot about our priorities, right? Our schedules are really come down to our priorities. We make time for the things that we really care about, and our schedules can kind of begin to shape our identities. You know, when you look at our schedules and see what's on it, that can become a little bit of who we are and we take on that personality. And those things are all good and they're natural and normal. And the one little sticky issue is that it makes everything all about us and our busyness. What am I going to do? What do I need to do? What should I be doing? And it's easy to forget about God in the middle of all these transitions that come with fall. So this year, I've been thinking about baptism. Maybe it's all the rain that all of a sudden we've been having, but I've got baptism on my mind. And I have to give some credit this morning. I owe a lot of these thoughts that I'll share with you today to a great thinker and teacher and theologian that I know named John Whitbleet. Um, he lives in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and works for an organization called the Calvin Institute of Christian Worship. And I got a chance to work with him um, just after I finished college there and um, learned a lot from him. So... This goes back to him. So, John, if you happen to be watching, thank you. Um, but in an article for a magazine called Reformed Worship, John Whitley pointed out that this problem of us taking stock in fall is that it puts all of the emphasis on our busyness, all the things that we should be doing and need to be doing, and tends to take the focus away from God and what God is doing and what God has done for us in our lives. When we spend all our time looking at schedules and calendars and sign-up sheets and different opportunities, it tends to put our focus on us. But when we think about baptism, on the other hand, it's all about God and God's action and God's promises in our lives. Listen to these words from Romans 6. This is Romans 6, verses 1 to 11. And it says this. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too could live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. 
Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. These words, these verses in Romans 6 are all about our identity as baptized people. It all hinges on the fact that we were baptized in Christ. And many of us, I know, in this room have been baptized already. Some of us were baptized as little babies, like me. Some of us were baptized as teenagers or adults or somewhere in between. Um, but many of us in this room have been baptized already. And for those of you, if there's anyone who hasn't been baptized, don't tune out. This is for you, too, and I invite you to consider if that might be a next step for you as we look at this. But this is who we are as baptized people of Christ. In our baptism, we've died to sin, and we're alive with God. We're new. Our lives are made new in Christ through our baptism, and we have a new identity. When we're baptized, we die to sin, and we're raised again. In a sense, we're alive with Christ again. Just as Christ was raised again, Scripture says, so we too have been raised with Christ to live a new life. That's our identity as baptized children of God. That's who we are already. That's who God has made us to be already. Now picture with me a baptism. We have a couple of baptismal fonts of sorts up here this morning. Um, and here at Harbor Church, we often baptize babies. And at the Christian Reformed Church that we're a part of, we baptize infants. Of course, if someone wants to be baptized as an adult, we are happy to do that too. But traditionally, we would baptize an infant. So you picture an infant baptizing baptism, it's, it's kind of a gentle thing, right? We, we hold the baby and we maybe sprinkle water on their forehead or make the sign of the cross on their forehead and welcome that child into the family of the, the Church of Christ. Or some of you maybe were baptized as adults, and I've seen some really beautiful baptism services here in Seattle where people go to Green Lake or to Lake Washington and actually stand in those cold waters and dunk the person all the way under and come up. And what a powerful picture that is of dying with Christ and being raised again to new life, to being submerged and coming out totally clean and new. There are lots of different ways to do baptism. But regardless of the picture, the image is this. We've died with Christ, and we've been raised with Christ. We're, we're touched with that water of baptism, whether it's a little sprinkle on our forehead or being totally soaked in Green Lake. The water of baptism washes us clean and gives us a new identity, a new creation, a new life in Christ. And that's who we are from that point on. We are someone who has been washed clean. We are a baptized child of God. I said before that our schedules and our programs and commitments ultimately come down to priority. We make time for the things that are important to us. So it's easy to, to think then that our identities are wrapped up in all the things that we do. If you were to look at my calendar, which believe me, I already have quite organized for the fall, because that's how I am. But <laughs> um, if you were to look at my calendar, you would see it full of outreach events coming up at Harvard Church and things with our preschool and things with my family and families coming to visit and all of those kinds of things. And so it would be easy to say, looking at my calendar, that, okay, I am an outreach pastor, I am a preschool director, and I am a, a wife and a mom and a daughter. And that's who I am. And those things are all true. But what happens if one of them goes away? What happens if someone were to say, you know, 16 kids in a preschool really isn't that good, let's shut it down, and I was no longer a preschool director? What would happen if that was where I saw my identity, just in that piece of my schedule? What would that do to me? Scripture tells me that no, my identity is rooted in my baptism with Christ, that I have died with Christ, and I've been raised with him, and will be raised again when he comes again, and that's who I am. It's not just about my schedule, although that's important and shows you the things that are important to me and the things that I love to do and want to do and I'm excited about doing. But regardless of what's on my schedule, I am now and always will be a child of God. That's who I am. That's who you are here this morning. In your baptism, 
God made clear the promises of the gospel for you. God embraced you and welcomed you into the body of Christ, the church, and your work this year in your workplaces, in your families, here at Harbor Church, that's all in response to God's work in your lives. You're working out the implications of your baptism in those things that are on your schedules. You're working out that identity that God has given you as a baptized child, a baptized son or daughter of the King in these things that we fill our schedules with in this new season and time of transition. We don't need our, our schedules and our busyness to tell us who we are. We are God's baptized children. That's who you are. Our lives are lives that are set free from sin and made new in Christ. Romans 6 urges us to count ourselves dead to sin and alive in, in God and Christ Jesus. To recognize about that self, to, to, to name it and claim it, as some of our Pentecostal brothers and sisters might say. <laughs> and if we count ourselves among those who are alive, what does that mean for our schedules? And what does it mean for a time of year like now, where we're at the cusp of all of these new things starting and transitions are swirling around? If we count ourselves as those who have been raised with Christ, how does that change how we see these transitions and interact with these transitions? How does living out our baptismal identity happen in those things that take up our time? What if we turned this schedule and identity question on its head, and instead of letting what's on our schedules determine our identity, what if we, we started the other way and let our identity as a baptized child of God shape our schedules? What difference might that make? What things might you commit to or not commit to, or what changes might you make in your life? What if, as we begin September and sip our pumpkin spice lattes from Starbucks with real pumpkin this year, and watch football and, watch and reorganize our calendars, what if we start all of those things with our identity, recognizing that we have died with Christ and are raised with him? What if we start with saying, I'm a baptized son or daughter of Christ, I've died to sin, and I'm alive with him, and then, in that recognition, decide what's going to take up our time this year. John Whitley, that great source of mine this week, pointed out that really the whole point of our schedules and programs and the things that happen in our lives and in our churches we hope and pray, at least, that the point of those is to make space for the Spirit to come in and create us as faithful disciples. Those things that we do in our lives, we hope, are things that make room for the Spirit to work in our lives and our hearts. And is that true of your schedules as we look in fall? Is that true of mine? I think that's one of those questions that our baptismal identity forces us to ask. Or is our focus simply on ourselves and our own busyness? Where is God a part of all of those things? In baptism, we learn that each of us belongs to God and to each other. And here at Harbor Church and in the Christian Reformed Church that we're a part of, when we baptize someone, we promise together to form that person, to help them become better disciples of Christ and to form each other in that, in faith. And to make sure that we all hear how much God loves each one of us. That's the promises we make in baptism. And that's who we are. I, um, I have a liturgy that was made up by a colleague of mine that focuses on baptism birthdays. And I really love this idea. Um, this, this colleague of mine, her name is Heidi DeYoung, um, has three little girls, all of whom were baptized as babies. And she really wanted those girls to grow up knowing what it means that they were baptized. Because of course, when you're a little baby, you don't remember what baptism was or what happened on that day. So she wanted a way to teach them continually throughout their lives what it means to be baptized. So every year on the dates of their baptism, she goes through this liturgy and they have cake like it's a real birthday and they get little presents. Um, and they celebrate this day. So they have one day a year where they celebrate when they were born, and then another day when they celebrate when they were reborn, in a sense, in baptism. And now Jeremy and I have this liturgy, and we'll do it with Nora. November 30th is her baptism birthday. Um, and today, I want to celebrate our baptism birthdays. So we're actually going to take a second um, as we close here and, and remember our baptism, and reaffirm those promises to help keep that identity in our mind. Um, so, Alice, we have that, that liturgy on the screen. 
Um, and I invite you to join with me in this. Um, I'll read the part that's just in the regular text, and the bold on the bottom will be your part. So, um, <laughs> Alice wants to get home for lunch. <laughs> um, so, will you join me in remembering our baptism this morning? Harbor Church, when you were baptized, God said to you, I love you. You are part of my church. Listen to me. We have put on Christ, in him we have been baptized. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Harbor Church, do you trust God and say no to Satan? Yes. yes. Does Jesus forgive your sin? Yes. With God's help, will you obey him and show love to other people? Yes. yes. Let's all answer the following questions together. Harbor Church, do you believe in God the Father? Yes. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have put on Christ, and in him we have been baptized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you pray with me? Faithful God, in baptism you claimed us, and by your Spirit you are working in our lives, helping us to live lives worthy of your calling. We thank you for leading each of us to celebrate our baptism. And guide us by your spirit so that we could grow in faith and hope and love. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Let's end with that refrain one more time. We have put on Christ. In him, him we, we have been baptized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the confirmation of your identity. And if there's anyone here who hasn't yet been baptized, I invite you to think through those questions and those answers that you just read. And if you can answer them, I invite you to find one of us and we can, we can talk about maybe taking that next step in your walk with Christ too.